Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. Remember the product and quotient rules? You can use the product and quotient rules to develop derivatives for trig functions other than sine and cosine because all the other trig functions can be written in terms of quotients of sines and cosines. So we're going to do that today. Find the derivative by rewriting the given trigonometric function in terms of sines and cosines in order to come up with a derivative. Remember, we know that the derivative with respect to x of sine of x is what? Cosine of x, that's right. And we also learned that the derivative with respect to x of cosine of x was negative sine x, good. Well now, when I look at the function f of x equals tangent of x, I can rewrite it as what over what? Sine x over cosine x, very good. Which means that now that we have a quotient rule, a rule for taking the derivative of something with an x divided by something with an x, as long as they're both differentiable, we can apply the quotient rule here. So the rule for finding the derivative of f is we're going to take bottom d top, good, minus top d bottom over bottom squared, good. And we know the derivative of the top and derivative of the bottom, right? So we're good to go. So f prime of x is going to be equal to what goes first? Bottom, which is in this case cosine x, times the derivative of the top. Derivative of sine is cosine of x minus the top, which is sine of x, times the derivative of the bottom. What's the derivative of cosine again? Negative sine x. All over the bottom squared, so cosine of x squared. There's a bit of simplifying we can do here. f prime of x is equal to, remember when we write squares of trig functions, we put the squared next to the s there, so cosine squared x plus sine squared x, good, over cosine squared x, good. Okay, and I would bet that different people would look at this and simplify it using different techniques. You're going to come up with the same answer, but what's one way? What's cosine squared plus sine squared? Equal to as an identity, you remember that? Let's write down the Pythagorean identities. The Pythagorean identities refers to identities related to the fact that in the unit circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? Okay, so these are referred to as Pythagorean identities, and the first one tells us that cosine squared plus sine squared is one. So one person might look at this and say, okay, I'm gonna just replace this whole numerator with one. So that would mean that f prime of x is equal to one over cosine squared x, which is equal to what? Secant squared x. That's the formula that we use in general for the derivative of the tangent is secant squared. So what's another way another person might have worked this out? They might have divided each part by cosine squared, right? And then what would happen? You'd get one plus, what's sine squared over cosine squared though? Tangent squared of x, which again, because of this third Pythagorean identity is still gonna be equal to secant squared, okay? If a person got one plus tangent squared x and left it like that, would that be fine? Yes. The reason why I'm emphasizing the secant squared is because this is the one we're gonna memorize, okay? Because it's gonna be the easiest one to memorize once you see the pattern. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it. Follow the link to my next video.